Now our next speaker is a real expert in the field of oil. In fact, uh, in, uh, he has been um, a director of the uh, branch organization representing the 10 major oil companies operating in the Netherlands. And he's worked for 47 years in the oil industry and the last 12 years as a director of that organization. And in, when in 2002, um, we were confronted with the Brussels directive to introduce biofuels, from his point of view, he already mentioned that it's, it's probably going to be a very stupid idea. Biomass that is competing for land, that is competing for food, to put that in your car is, is quite a stupid idea, isn't it? But anyway, so it happened, and um, I think he's going to challenge that it is a stupid idea and that there are better solutions. So I, uh, I would like to ask uh, Dominic Boot here on stage and uh, give him an applause. He's going to do this in seven minutes. It's not fair. I mean, seven minutes is definitely too short to discuss climate change or oil reserves or the economics of biofuels. As the chairwoman just said, biofuels were a bad idea from the start. They're the wrong answer to a poorly posed question. They're at best a short-term palliative. They won't solve the problem long-term. And they're unfit for the Dutch bio-based economy. Now currently, it is commonly assumed that biofuels owe their existence to climate change. Actually, biofuels had a complicated start. They had a father and a mother and a stepmother. And the father of biofuels is security of supply. Europe, early 2000, was getting increasingly worried that with decreasing Dutch gas, decreasing North Sea oil, there would be increasing dependence on Arab oil, which we didn't want, and Russian gas, which we didn't want. Now, if you depend on your neighbors, the logical thing to do is to be friendly with your neighbors. Instead of which, trying to grow your own biofuels is an atavistic, old-fashioned reflex. Building good relationships is not wagging your finger at the world. I don't know whether you saw on uh, TV the Durban conference, Durban climate conference where the EU delegate, a lady, was actually wagging her finger at the delegate from India, saying, we have been very patient with you. It is not Europe's place to be patient with the rest. The rest of the world is running out of patience with Europe. The world does not need Europe, but Europe needs the world. And instead of wagging our finger, we should work at developing energy efficient systems, and we are very good at that in Holland, agricultural efficiency, and we are good at that. And what we are discussing today, develop new green products, which are actually of help to the world. So we should help the world rather than wagging our finger and saying how they should behave. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, there is no relationship between energy dependence and economic growth. Think about Japan, think about Singapore, 100% dependent on imported energy, and yet their economics grew. Biofuels are the wrong answer. But then Europe had the next one, the agricultural policy. Now the previous speaker spoke about this, and I heard some of it. The agricultural policies in the United States and in Europe have led to absurdities. In the United States, corn ethanol is now so heavily subsidized that ethanol from the United States is exported to, to Europe, which we stick in our tanks, and we export gasoline made from Arab oil back to America. In Europe, the agricultural policy has led to the absurdity of 7% fallow land. So we pay the farmers to let 7% of their land lie fallow. That doesn't help the climate because they change the land every year. What would be the logical solution is to turn that land back to nature. Pay the farmers less, reduce the subsidies, and start reforestation, which is anyway one of the best things we can do for climate change. 
Meanwhile, the production of biofuels has led to an increase of 3.7 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions. That's a substantive amount. That is as much as the CO2 emissions from total industry worldwide. That is not just CO2 because of irrigation. That is also because of uh, nitrogen, which you understand more about than I do. But you fertilize the stuff and the nitrogen goes back up and nitrogen is the worst greenhouse gas. So the mother of biofuels is in clear conflict with the stepmother, which was climate change. Now, climate change has provided Europe with a moral high ground. All of a sudden, we are no longer talking about our security of supply. All of a sudden, we are no longer talking about our agricultural policy. We in Europe are now talking about saving the world, preserving the world climate. This is a highly emotional context. And because it's emotional, it's become political. And because it's political, it's no longer rational, but based on wishful thinking. It has also provided an enormous business opportunity. That's why biofuels will be very hard to eradicate because there are enormous amounts of people and businesses now involved in producing biofuels. Now the logic is if you are concerned about the man-made CO2 that you find the most efficient way of reducing CO2. The combustion of biomass to turn it into electricity is far more efficient, five times more efficient than turning it into biofuels. What does that mean? That I only got one minute left? <laughs> Jesus. Um, electrical cars, moreover, are far more efficient than fossil dr driven cars. Illogically, however, politicians decided that the transport sector must do its share. Now, the logic would be, as I said, I, I'm going to stip, but there is a fuel quality directive in place which says that the content, the carbon content of fuels has to be reduced by 10% in 2020. And there is emissions for cars in place, emission limits at 120 grams uh, of CO2 per kilometer driven. Biofuels don't help in either of those. Meanwhile, you know this, biofuel cultivation has led to an enormous amount of problems. I'll skip over rapidly. And what you find is an incredible alliance between Greenpeace and oil industry, always each other's enemies, now agreeing that biofuel cultivation is purely bad. I give you a simple syllogism. There are better things to do with biomass than turning into biofuels. There are better ways to reduce emissions from cars, like electric cars, like improving the transport system, like efficient fuels, clean fuels and efficient engines. You wouldn't believe how much more efficient engines are today than they were even 10 years ago. The engine sizes are getting smaller because of clean fuels, not because of biofuels. Therefore, biofuels do nothing else but prolong the efficiency of the current transport system. Now, I hear you say, Madam Chairman, yeah, I got to go we were going to square the circle and make new biofuels. We have introduced the sustainability criteria. We have introduced more criteria belonging to the Kramer criteria, which have not been accepted worldwide yet. But will they ever become cost competitive or forever require subsidies? Will they alleviate security of supply? Answer no. A study by the IEA shows that in order to make the new generation biofuels it require so much energy that Holland actually becomes more important on Russian gas than before. So it makes the security of supply problem worse. This is a big question I have with one of the professors here in Wageningen, whether by pure le legislation you can stimulate companies to make new biofuels. Well, they won't if they're not profitable. Will there be enough? According to the best optimistic, most optimistic estimates, it will only be 8 or 7% in 2020. So by long, not enough. Is this the best use of biomass? Answer, no. Professor Johann Sanders here in Wageningen knows a lot more about it. You can make 
valuable chemicals of it. So, new biofuels won't solve the problem. Biomass has a much higher value as chemical feedstock. Burning stover, which is what left over from the plant in order to make electricity, is much better than trying to get biomass out of it. Reforestation is something we should really do. Yes, I know, I'm leaving, I'm talking faster. <laughs> Biofuels, I hope to have convinced you, have no place in the Dutch bio-based economy. They are not an innovative long-term solution. They're part of the past. The future of transport is lean engines, clean fuels, and electrical cars. And that's from somebody coming from the oil companies. But yes, I believe it. Therefore, don't put a plant in your tank. Thank you very much. Yes.